I think she can do that. She's a kid. Like with many fears, so much so that she does not sleep alone. Uh. The boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend. Why? I don't Señor know. He dropped her off next to the church that is next to the middle school. He left her there and she started walking and he drove off. In 2022, she said her stepfather was very mean to her. Let's talk more about the Stefan Stearns case and let's talk about this evidence we're waiting for, updates, older videos you may have seen, you may not have seen. First off, this is a video titled Madeline's Spanish Lessons. Madeline's Spanish Lessons. It was posted to Facebook on May 16th, 2016 at 9.32 p.m. Now, I don't know if that's when it was filmed or filmed earlier. So Maddie would have been five years old. And this is a video I've sent off to police. I sent it to the Orlando police, a public information officer. I gave that person the link, the person's name who filmed it or posted it or whatever. I'm not even showing the whole video and I'm not even going to play the audio because I had it transcribed several times from Spanish to English and it's just disturbing the more I watch it. So it might be an innocent little video. It might be me being paranoid. Of course, that's what we hope for, but still, I'm hoping they can examine it in the Madeline Soto case, along with all the other evidence to make sure they have all the culprits responsible in this case for harming this young girl. So in the video, Maddie is a cute little girl, sounds like she's watching TV or YouTube or something, and there's a male voice that's telling her, okay, you know, if you want your back scratched, lay down or whatever, and she has her cute little red dress on and her dress is flouncing up and she has her underwear on, so of course I'm not showing any of that stuff, but she plops down and then the disturbing part is the English translation says, says that the man says, you've got to lie face down. And she turns her head like this, you know, on the pillow, it's so cute. But then he's like, no, you got to turn your whole body around. So she does. And then she says, she jumps up kind of, and she's like, no squeezing. And I'm like, okay. The video ends with Maddie imploring him, the man to let her watch the video. Like she's used to being videotaped. She's a cute little girl and of course if it's just a innocent moment then fine but knowing what we know in this case what we've learned in this case I'm really hoping it's part of the videos that police are examining as a whole not only in Stefan Stearns's case it was not on his Facebook but on many people's Facebook accounts or wherever they find videos related to this case or related to Maddie maybe it's nothing but it's disturbing and sometimes we just need another set of eyes, another person to look at things. And that's what's happening today. So today is Thursday, September 5th. And I learned yesterday that the public records woman down in Florida was watching a certain video in this case. I don't know which one. She didn't even know which one. She didn't even know what she was watching. So she's meeting with a detective today to, I guess, get his or her input about, first of all, what she's seeing in whatever video she's watching. They're still getting the go ahead and approval approval of what's approved to be released and what's not. Florida has their sunshine public records laws, which make Florida a great state in terms of getting actual evidence, getting actual facts. That's what we're trying to do here. So we'll see what they release to us. And we've also learned there's at least one interview of Jennifer Soto that we have not seen, Madeline's mother, Jennifer. I don't know if it's a video interview, I'm hoping it is, or if it's just another audio interview. It's one hour and nine minutes long. I know we haven't seen any videos of her that long because I believe the longest audio we've heard so far is about 35 minutes. So as we wait and wait for them to approve evidence, I wanted to talk more about these Spanish language interviews that several people gave to the media in the first few days or the first week or so. Some of them conducted when Maddie was still missing. Jennifer Soto spoke with a Spanish language media outlet. So did her mother, Yolanda Zambrano. This first one we will examine again because I've run it through the dubbing software and I picked up a little bit more maybe than we examined before. This is more than 30 hours after Maddie was reported missing. So Telemundo 31 reporter David Palomino spoke with Jennifer. He's one of the first reporters to speak with Jennifer. We have seen some interviews from maybe Monday night. This is Tuesday, February 27th. It's been more than 24 hours since Maddie was reported missing. And since we've listened to all the currently available police interviews with Jennifer, I wanted to dig into these translated videos again. Also the ones of Yolanda 
Yolanda Zambrano. It's interesting, I picked up that both Yolanda and Jennifer call Stefan Jennifer's boyfriend, not ex-boyfriend, not partner, nothing like that. The common theme with both of these women is that they think someone took Maddie. Someone just took her. Now, I'm not sure if Jennifer truly believed that, if she knew otherwise, or if she was really having an impact upon her mother, impressing upon her mother. Someone took Maddie. Someone took Maddie. Another common theme throughout these women's interviews is that Maddie was supposedly spotted on that Peace Church surveillance video. And they thought it was her sitting in a green sweater, sitting there and walked away. Well, we know that's not true, but it is brought up quite a bit. And then lastly, I want to take another look at that interview from Maddie's best friend, a boy named Joseph who he admitted Maddie told him her stepfather, that's what the translation says, her stepfather was very mean to her in 2022. So let's dig into all of this. And anyone who wants to watch the Spanish language original videos for themselves, I've linked to them below because if you know Spanish, then you'll be able to check my translations and see how well the dubbing software did. But Jennifer's first words claim that night, and I'm wondering if this is the night when, you know how we could hear those police interviews and at one point, Myra Tagler, Detective Myra Tagler says, is that media? Media interrupts their interviews. I wonder if it's these that got interrupted. It may have been. I wonder if it's these interviews that interrupted her interviews with police. And did Jennifer find them a welcome distraction or what? It's notable that Stefan did not speak with the Spanish language media like Univision or Telemundo, which makes sense because he probably doesn't speak Spanish, I assume. But Jennifer's first words, are translated as, in the morning, my boyfriend took her to school. He dropped her off next to the church that is next to the middle school. He left her there and she started walking and he drove off. It's something about the way she says, and he drove off. It's so flippant and dismissive of a wave. It just gets me every time. Orange County, where Madeline Soto, this 13-year-old Hispanic girl, has been missing for more than 30 hours. At this hour of the night, the authorities from the Orange County Sheriff's Office are still looking for of her. Of the family. What happened to her? What happened to the mother? Her family is also desperately searching for her. The investigation has focused around Hunter's Creek Middle School, where she was last seen. David Palomino speaks with it. A little girl's family, the girl's mother says she has a feeling that someone took her daughter. As you can see at this hour, the authorities have cordoned off part of the apartment complex located in the Hunter's Creek area as the investigation continues. In the morning, a, my boyfriend took her to school. He dropped her off next to the church that is next to the middle school. He left her there and she started walking and he drove off. But I'm realizing when Jennifer started speaking with these Spanish language interviewers, there was no confusion with her saying, oh, I dropped her off, we dropped her off. Maybe she had finally stopped saying I and we and all that. Maybe she realized how confusing and misleading that was and that police could easily check and see it was Stefan that dropped her off, supposedly. Anyway, Jennifer's first words are claiming, in the morning, my boyfriend took her to school. He dropped her off next to the church that is next to the middle school school. He just dropped her off. He left her there and she started walking and he drove off like almost like don't look at him. Clear him. He drove off. He got away from her. You know, that's where his involvement ends. That's the way I take her body language. Now, of course, the translations might not be perfect. Some of the translations said he just left her there and other ones said he dropped her off. From the authorities of the Orange County Sheriff's Office, they have been searching a wooded area near Hunters Creek Middle School. Um, they brought dogs to see if they can pick up her scent around here. I think they're investigating right now. Jennifer was explaining their canine, cute little doggy officers there trying to track Madeline's scent. They brought the dogs to see if they can pick up her scent. I think they are investigating right now. The one thing I hate are all the edits. Of course, they can only spend so much time on these cases. But you know, us who are digging deep and delving into these cases, we want all of it. We want to see the pauses, the mistakes, the missteps and all that. Hopefully, Univision and Telemundo one day will release their raw videos or hopefully they've already released their raw videos to police. That's what happened in the case of Chris Watts. They call it his sermon on the poor 
that's what true crime rocket science always called it. But when Chris Watts was out there lying, part of it he was standing in his driveway, part of it he was on his porch and Denver outlets interviewed him. Some of those raw news interviews ended up in Chris Watts's case discovery files. So I hope they have all these too, so we can see the full interviews and it's not just so snipped. Anyway, Jennifer, make sure to mention here, there's this alleged footage of Maddie at Peace Church. And there are videos out on the streets. The videos left on the street. There's a video from a church next to the school where they believe they see my daughter. Of the family, the minor is wearing a green sport shirt, black shorts and white crocs. According to her family, she forgot her cell phone at home that day. Supposedly, Maddie was caught on camera, and I don't know who mixed up this girl or whatever, how grainy the footage looks or whoever's on the actual video. I don't know who was the first person who brought this up to Jennifer, but she sure did run with it. You know, she told, I guess, her sister about it or her sister told her about it. I think it may have been Orange County, the sheriff's office, and maybe they were, you know, doing their due diligence, of course, and maybe they were like, oh, look at this grainy photo. Is this really, could this be Maddie? I felt like Jennifer glommed onto that unsure piece of evidence and started, you know, telling the media and just telling people so she could go with this narrative. Like, see, Maddie was right where Stefan dropped her off and she was right there and she sat there and I don't know why she didn't go straight to school. To me, almost like victim blaming from the beginning and saying, see, Maddie just didn't do what she was supposed to do. My boyfriend did what he was supposed to do and that's it. That's the way I take it. So Jennifer is making sure to mention this footage but we know it wasn't Maddie. But Jennifer's talking about these videos left on the street or videos from the street, video from a church next to the school where they believe they see my daughter. So it is very telling also in these Spanish language interviews, we don't hear Jennifer say Maddie's name at all. You know, no matter the language, we would hear her saying Maddie or Madeline. We've only heard her say her name specifically, of course, the night before Monday on the officer's body cam when she had to tell the officer, Madeline's name. What's her name? Madeline. She spelled it out. Stearns was there like a parrot, you know, saying the same thing. But in giving Jennifer the benefit of the doubt, maybe she did say Maddie's name in portions of these interviews that have been edited out. But I do find it kind of odd not hearing Maddie's name, even from her mom and grandmother. I know they can't just start off necessarily by saying Madeline this, Madeline that, or Maddie this and Maddie that. But once they had it established, if Jennifer would have said, my missing daughter, her name is Madeline Soto. We like to call her Maddie. You know, just no kind of warmth there in talking about her daughter. Then she could have been referencing her as Maddie this or Maddie that, or I'm sure Maddie wouldn't run away. But she just, they don't say Maddie's name. They say my daughter or the missing girl. You'll hear. What does that mother's intuition tell you? That someone took my daughter away. In my heart, someone took my daughter away. What does your maternal instinct tell you? In my heart, someone took my daughter because it's not normal for her to just live like that, to run away. She's not that kind of person. At the home of the young woman who disappeared from the house. So the reporter starts asking Jennifer about her gut feelings as a mother. You know, it's a good question. He asks her something like, what does your maternal instinct tell you? Or what's your mother's intuition telling you? And she's quick that someone took my daughter away. In my heart, someone took my daughter because it's not normal for her to just leave like that, to run away. She's not that kind of person. Please bring her back to me. Let her be healthy. Let her be well. I just want her back. Please have her return to me. May she be safe. May she be well. I just want her to be returned. Please, I just want her back uh, safe and sound. That's all I ask for. Please, I just want her back safe and sound. That's all I ask for. Please bring her back to me. Have her return to me. However she's saying it, that's what she's saying. And she goes into me to what almost sounds like a prayer or actually it almost sounds like a eulogy. Like she's praying for her safety, but maybe almost still eulogizing her or giving her a benediction. Maybe that's what it sounds like more. Let her be healthy. Let her be well. I just want her back. May she be safe. May she be well. I just want her to be returned. 
So I don't know, what do you think about that portion? I guess it's normal, even though it's rare for strangers to abduct a child. I've been watching all these different people cover it, hidden true crime and true crime rocket science. I like the way he was looking at the actual statistics. Nick over there on true crime rocket science. He's saying, okay, even though a lot of time parents or loved ones glom onto the notion, it must be a stranger, a stranger abducted this child. The statistics don't bear it out. The statistics show that usually it is someone who knows the child who's taken the child. But I don't know if Jennifer or her mother knew that or even wanted to entertain that thought. Were both of them just believing Stefan Stearns? Did he pull the wool over their eyes or did Jennifer know more? The boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend. Why? I don't know. Next, Felix Pirelli. He's with Telemundo 31. He also published a report whilst Maddie was still missing. He conducted an interview with Yolanda. So Yolanda, again, is Maddie's grandma, Jennifer's mom. And according to the dates, I believe this interview was conducted on Wednesday, February 28th, but before Stearns was arrested. Yolanda looks tired, exhausted. You know, I can't imagine how worried she was about Maddie, but she spoke of losing hope. She also mentioned it's been nearly three days since Maddie's been missing and she doesn't quite say Maddie also she says a lot the missing girl and then they phone nothing and immediately move to another point in Osceola County specifically Kissimmee where I am currently live specifically where the apartment where the woman lives is located mother of this girl but earlier I also somehow talked to the grandmother Madeleine Soto school uh, where she also lived because this girl spent some days with her maternal grandmother because she lived near the school where she studied and also lived there for a few days as grandma told us. But my daughter worked the night before on Sunday and it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring her here. And that's all we know. Because it wasn't part of the routine the boyfriend no, usually followed. That is to say, daughter. it was not part of the routine that the boyfriend no, frequently no, followed. No, no, always my daughter. No, I always my daughter. And on the church cameras, you can see there's a girl with a green sweater sitting in the parking lot for a while. And then a few minutes later, she gets up and heads toward the school. That's the last anyone knows of her. And every day that goes by is worse. You start to lose hope after almost three days of being missing. We don't know what else to do anymore. I think someone took her away. And then there's another interview to follow with Yolanda. I believe it's the same day. She's wearing the same clothing with a different reporter. And she's going to speak about being frustrated over the way the school did not notify the parents to Maddie missing school all day. I think they've changed that notification process in the meantime, but only one version I could find, a little snippet of Yolanda's interview, catches the brief snippet of her explaining that Stefan Stearns no longer lived in that town home with Maddie and Jennifer. The boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend because I don't know. But uh, my daughter worked the night before on Sunday. And it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring it to her. So she knew that part and she calls him the boyfriend, not ex-boyfriend, and she doesn't use his name. She's probably like, ugh, I don't want to say his name. He who shall not be named. Yolanda does admit with a shrug of her shoulders like she didn't know why Stearns was even there in town. She starts off, the boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend. Why? You know, I don't know because I don't know. So there's a lot there she's not saying. According to internet scuttlebutt and rumors, Yolanda didn't like Stefan anyway. I think that's even proven out in some of these case document files. Yes, in her interview, I should plop it at the end. Yolanda definitely says basically she didn't like Stefan. He didn't do anything. Basically, he was just a layabout and everything. So I wish we could have more of this portion of her interview where she talks about the boyfriend no longer lived there. Basically, Yolanda was wondering why was he even there that weekend? Because I seriously doubt that Stefan was invited to her house because Yolanda held the birthday party for Maddie. I feel like she really cared for the girl. You know, that Sunday, her mom was at work. Jennifer was off at work. Yolanda 
used her home to host Maddie's little friends and have a birthday party for her granddaughter. Yolanda talked about Jennifer working the night before. She said, my daughter worked the night before on Sunday and it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring her, bring Maddie. That's it, that's as much as we know, she's saying basically. It sounds like the reporter is saying something like, well, this was a new part of the routine that's not done frequently, as if he's referencing how unusual and rare it was for Stearns to take Maddie to school. And Yolanda agrees, yeah, it's rare, if ever, Stearns never took Maddie to school, or maybe rarely, I don't know. Yolanda says, always my daughter, always. Let Stefan tell it, you know, I'm listening to his interview again over here on Court TV. I like listening to interviews over and over, the audio, that's all we have for that one. I believe it was maybe the same night, maybe it was this night, the 27th or whatever, and the cops are really digging into Stearns, like, how many times have you really taken her to school before? And Stearns Stearns is claiming it's been about, I don't know what he said, about five or more times or something like that. He's trying to make it seem like, oh, it's not too rare for me to drop her off. But other people throughout all these interviews, throughout all the documents, they're saying, yeah, that's rare. That's not something that he's done before, if ever, or rarely. Because the cops are trying to say, well, you know, how do you normally take her to school? Where do you normally drop her off? And Stearns tries to make it seem like, oh yeah, I usually always drop her off around Peace Church, around the parking lot, as if it's more common than it was. But anyway, Yolanda says, and a few minutes later, you know, she gets up and heads to school. That, that's all that's known about her. And with every day that passes, Passes, it gets worse. One loses hope after almost three days missing. We don't know what else to do. I believe Yolanda's despair was really real. She's kind of showing more emotion than her daughter did. It's not like she cried or anything, but from her voice, from the tone, from the original Spanish interviews I've seen and heard, she sounds upset. And she says, in my mind, someone took her. And then she moves on. See me, police. Uh, Madeline Soto's mother continues to cooperate with the investigation. Everyone that was close to Madeline is considered a suspect until we have proven otherwise. For Madeline's grandmother, the police's efforts are in vain. I think we're wasting our time looking for her around here. It's been three days and there's no sign of anything. Mm, I'm sure they must have taken the girl away from here. Exactly. Because it was nine hours without the school or us knowing anything about the girl. So is it possible that a girl doesn't make it to school and Orange County notifies at 6 p.m. with a recording? In the next one, until next Your daughter was not absent today at her school? Yes, they are. Hours during which the family had no idea that Madeline was missing? See you next time because nine hours passed without the school or us knowing anything about the girl. Which is why they're asking the county to change its policies. Why don't they at least do it for the first period? When they see that a child didn't arrive, call. Maybe the child was sick or has a medical appointment. I think Orange County needs to change that. Now the that. heartbroken family is preparing for the worst. I'm losing hope after three days. The missing girl at this point, I think the worst has happened to her. But they hold hope that Madeleine will return you know, home. Anyone who has any information, no matter how small, please contact us or the police. To the person who took her, may God open your heart. Return her and return her safely. The reporter talks about how for Maddie's grandma, the efforts of the police are in vain. This was curious to me. Yolanda thought it was a waste of time searching for Maddie in the local area. I guess she meant the local Hunter's Creek area around the school, her office, or I don't know. She's saying something about they're wasting their time going back. I don't know if she meant they're wasting their time searching around the condo, the townhome where Maddie lived. It's not clear where Yolanda thought Maddie was taken but she is resolute in believing, yeah, Maddie was kidnapped, Maddie was abducted. I don't know if at this point Yolanda thought Stearns had anything to do with it at all. She said, I think we're wasting our time looking for her around here. I'm sure the girl must have been taken from here. I'm sure the girl was kidnapped. Now, it might be lost in translation, but that part I find weird. Maddie being referred to as the girl by her grandmother. The language sounds so distant. She doesn't even say like nieta or she doesn't use a term of affection. I don't know if she's really saying the girl, the girl. And she's really stuck on 
Oh, she must be taken from here. She must be far away. Which, to tell you the truth, there are a lot of tropes and a lot of consistencies in true crime cases. You will always hear someone talking about a white van, for example. You'll always hear lately, oh, they could be headed to the Mexican border by now. It's always someone talking about the border. They're always talking about, oh, it was someone who trafficked her, or, you know, there's certain consistencies where people fall back on, and abduction, kidnapping, all these kind of tropes are always a person's first thoughts. So I don't know if that's why Yolanda is going to, she's got to be far away from here by now. I'm sure someone took her. She's falling for the tropes or if she's falling for whatever her daughter might be telling her. But Yolanda saved some of her anger too for also for the school's notification process or lack thereof back then. She said something like, how is it possible that a girl does not get to school and Orange County notifies at six in the evening by a recording? You know, she's saying that their child was absent from school today. Yolanda says because it was nine hours without the school or us knowing anything about the girl. Yolanda assumed that everyone in Madeline's family had no clue she was absent that day. Now, Stefan Stearns was probably really happy that the notification didn't go out right away. Because imagine if at 9.30, 10 a.m. or something, you know, they were notified, hey, Maddie never made it to school. So then the process of searching for her and backtracking Stefan's movements would have gone down a lot earlier than going all day, Jennifer supposedly assuming she was in school, going to pick her daughter up, waiting, you know, four o'clock, oh, and then the police didn't respond until 7.46 at night. I see why Maddie's grandma was frustrated, you know, looking at it from the outside in with the amount of information she had at this point. But I don't know, she's asking, why don't they do that? The first period when you see a child hasn't arrived, just call, whether it's because the child was sick or had a medical appointment. I think Orange County needs to change that. She's going on and on about Orange County needs to change that. And she's right. I believe they've changed it now because of Maddie's tragic case. But she did say, I'm running out of hope. Three days have passed since the girl disappeared. The missing girl at this point, I fear the worst has happened. And that's pretty logical. She may not have known what Stearns did at all at this point but her fears were confirmed. She feared the worst for Maddie had happened at that point, and she was right. Because at that point, three days out, Wednesday, it's probably more than just a miscommunication. You know, sometimes stuff happens. They might have thought Maddie ran away to a friend's house, or she's playing hooky, or she's hanging out, you know, on Monday. But then when it got late on Monday night, and it's like, wait, are you sure she's not over any friend's house? They're not harboring her. They're not hiding her, or she didn't run away to her dad in Houston or stuff like that, yeah, you get more worried by the time Wednesday rolls around, of course. She said, anyone who has any information, even the slightest, please contact us or the police. May the person who took her, may God open your heart and return her safely. So again, they both end their interviews, both Jennifer and Yolanda, kind of with a prayer, like, please God, Yolanda sold on whoever took her, please let God open your heart to bring her back safely. And that's kind of what, echoing what Jennifer I think she can do that. She's a kid, like with many fears, so much so that she does not sleep alone. And uh, I do not believe she can leave or run away, leave her house. But a grandmother added that this Sunday they were celebrating her birthday and that she did not notice any behavior that could indicate plans to run she away. She was very, very happy. All her little friends from school, which are two little friends, it was very nice. She had the happy time, content, took lots of photos, hugged her family. And this, a different snippet of Yolanda's interview. I could only find it on TikTok. I'm trying to find it all over the place. She spoke about Maddie's fears of sleeping by herself. He's a girl, like with some money fears. He, so much so that she no longer sleeps alone. She sleeps with her mom or sleeps with me in my bed at 13 years old. She is not a confident girl. Yolanda said she's a girl like with many fears, so much so that she no longer sleeps alone. She sleeps with her mom or sleeps with me in bed at 13 years old. 
she's not a confident girl. It's notable that Yolanda did not mention at this point she sleeps in bed with her mom and her mom's boyfriend. Yolanda may not have known that part. You know, I like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Yolanda may have thought Maddie just sleeps there in bed with Jen and maybe Stefan's up in that guest bedroom sleeping or she may have had no idea that Maddie was being sent off to sleep alone with Stefan. I mean, I'm sure she probably wouldn't like that. She didn't like Stefan anyway. She was probably so happy that he had moved out. So as far as Yolanda knew that prior December, 2023, Stefan was out of there. So maybe that's why Yolanda goes, you know, the boyfriend was back. I don't know why. You know, she was sure as shooting was probably thinking he's not coming over to my house to celebrate Maddie's birthday with her. And speaking of her birthday party, I keep wondering why Maddie had her birthday that Sunday, Sunday, February 25th, 2024. That Saturday, she was freaking out. Part of me wonders, was she freaking out because so many people started canceling and saying they're RSVPs, they were returning to say, Maddie, I'm not going to make it tomorrow. Is that why she was freaking out? Or was there something much more disturbing to make her freak out? In terms of Yolanda saying she's a girl with many fears, so much so that she no longer sleeps alone. So she's sleeping in the bed with her grandma. I wonder how much Yolanda questioned Maddie. And of course, Maddie may not have told her anything. I believe I believe Maddie did try to make some outcries when we talk about this next interview with her best friend. But I wonder how much Yolanda pressed Maddie to say, oh, honey, it's fine. You can sleep here. You can sleep in the bed with me. But please tell me what's going on. Uh, what is making you so afraid? Did she not feel comfortable enough with her grandma to try and open up a little more again? Was Maddie threatened? There's so many reasons, so much going on. But I do wonder how much Maddie told her grandma or hid from her grandma because her grandma knew, okay, she's too scared to sleep alone. And no wonder she wouldn't be a confident girl of course she would be, oh, I just cried last night watching Hidden True Crime. Dr. John Matthias, 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 I think it's Matthias, and his wife, Lauren, they're great, great, great video examining this case. And the way they opened the video, where Dr. John was really talking about Maddie as a human being and no one's seeing her, and whew, that was difficult. But it was a great examination of a victim like Maddie and, you know, her mother not protecting her, not seeing her, not hearing her voice voice then moving into the profile of a man like Stern. So I highly recommend watching that. But whoa, when Yolanda says she's not a confident girl, well, no wonder she's not confident. All the stuff that Stearns was doing to her. And unfortunately, we probably, oh, it just grosses me out to think. We probably just know the tip of the iceberg. And the stuff we've heard is horrible enough. But no wonder Maddie was so like downtrodden and depressed and sad in school. Just to be so, I'll just call Call it put upon but you know what i mean to be forced to do these things that a little girl should not be forced to do and all the you know medications and the miralax and of course there's nothing wrong with medications if you know you're prescribed them and it's meant to be and it's what you need to help improve your condition i'm not saying that but i think maddie was medicated a lot first of all to cover conditions that she may not have even suffered from or may have only suffered from as a result of this monster coming into their lives i find it very telling in one of jennifer's interviews when she's asked okay when did maddie get diagnosed with adhd and all these things and she starts mentioning you know right around the time and i just realized this is the year that stearns basically came into their lives 2016. so right around the time maddie was five years old that's when all of a sudden maddie started being diagnosed with adhd now i'm not saying jennifer and stearns became boyfriend and girlfriend by then but i'm assuming he may have met Maddie in 2016, if you go listen to Chris and Deborah Stern's interview, I'll link to it below. You know, they talked about when Stefan met Jennifer and how it was around 2016 because they said something like they were friends for 16 months first before they started dating in 2018. Even though a certain, you know, figure seven, eight years gets bandied about, we don't know how early Stearns had access to Maddie. And just because the first evidence of his abusing her started June 19th or was caught from June 19th, 2019, that doesn't mean obviously it was the first time. That was just the first video evidence. And it's pretty sad. She's a little girl just trying to watch cartoons or whatever. And he's like telling her what horrible act she had to perform in order to get his phone. 
That doesn't mean that's the first time he abused her. Unfortunately, it could have happened as soon as he met Jennifer. I don't know how soon. She talks about how hypervigilant she was. Jennifer was supposedly so hypervigilant when she met Stearns and wouldn't let basically any guy around her or not even her own dad and all this stuff. But we don't know how truly hypervigilant Jennifer actually was. You know, it's heartbreaking to see that photo of Maddie on Stefan's shoulders in the pool and knowing he had just performed these horrific acts on her the day before or the night before. Basically, I'm saying all this to say, we don't know how early this started. All of a sudden, when Maddie's five, you know, she starts getting diagnosed with all these problems. 2016, that's the year Stearns came into her life. So it's all kind of lining up. But eventually, over time, I believe Maddie grew and she probably thought, I'm not gonna take this anymore. All these uh, medications, she's so tired. She wasn't allowed to get good sleep. We all know how critical and crucial good sleep is to our health. And you know, I can't even begin to understand the emotional and physical toll, psychological toll, the assault took on Maddie as a young girl growing up, realizing this is painful. It shouldn't be happening, first of all, and I'm not getting enough sleep. Maybe she was forced to take Miralax to succumb to Stearns' kinks and all these things. You know, I won't get into details, but you know what I mean. Just very, very tired. People noticing how sad she was at school. And still, even still, her spirit kind of shone through. And that's what her friend talked about. But when I saw that message, I thought it was just normal, like they fought because, you know, something normal. Exactly. This Wednesday, students, teachers and neighbors held a mass in memory of Madre Insolta. The ceremony lasted approximately two hours, and although press access was restricted, we were able to enter without equipment and witness the grief that has struck this community. It was precisely at this venue where the mass in memory of Madre Insolta took place. Madeline Soto, her classmates and also people who knew her attended here and although we could not confirm that any of Madeline's immediate family attended the mass we saw how even her teachers prayed to God for the repose of her soul some of her friends with their parents permission shared on camera what they feel now that their friend Maddie as they call her has left this world everyone at school is sad on Monday and Tuesday the teachers were crying I have a teacher who couldn't even speak and she even knew Maddie and her family her best friend describes her as a happy girl. She had a smile on her face every day. She shone like a star. She had a smile on her face every day, shone like a star. One moment she told him something. One point she said that she was feeling bad at home. In the... That she had had some In 22, 22... She said that... That she felt... Um... 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 Issue... In 2022, she said her stepfather was very mean to her. Her stepfather was very mean to her. But when I saw that message, I thought it was like normal. Like something normal. Like they had fought. Because, you know, something exactly normal. The year In an interview with Maddie's best friend, you know, they got permission from his parents. He said that Maddie said that her stepfather was very bad to her. I hate that he's given that title of stepfather. It should be a title of honor that he didn't deserve. And I can see Jennifer just saying, yeah, you know, just call him stepfather, call him stepdad, trying to maybe force some honor and a relationship on him that he just didn't deserve. First of all, Jen and Stearns were never married. As far as I can tell, they were never even engaged. So there's that. But Maddie, I believe, was trying to make outcries, but people didn't understand perhaps the severity of her situation or, you know, maybe they pressed, maybe they pressed in. Friends remembered Maddie at a memorial after she was discovered in that wooded area. And I was like, wow, she kept talking about, I just want to move to the woods. And unfortunately, that's where Stearns left her body. But I pray God transformed her spirit and soul right there to make it be the place she wanted, a place of peace she ultimately got out. So no matter how she may have, you know, gone to the counselor quite a bit and saying, you know, my stepfather or my mother's boyfriend makes me uncomfortable. And maybe the counselor did press and say, yeah, why? And Maddie just said, well, he's, you know, lazy. He eats all our food. Those are the things that are easy to talk about. I don't know if Madeline ever went beyond that because she knew 
Maybe she was afraid or she knew, oh, this would break everything up. Maybe my mother would be mad at me. Maybe my mom would make good on her promise to kick me out. Kick me out when I turn 18. I hate that kind of talk. This was near Hunter's Creek High School where the community gathered for this mass to honor Maddie. So Maddie was found Friday, March 1st in the wooded area. And then afterward, at some point in the following week, I believe it was, you know, they had this memorial mass to celebrate her life and her best friend described her as a happy young girl. So Joseph said she shone like a star. That was so pretty. But he also admitted that, quote, in 2022, she said that her stepfather was very bad to her. So the translation from Maddie's best friend either said very bad to her or mean to her. But, you know, we get his drift but he was trying to explain and his interview is all chopped up to hell too i hate it but joseph said he simply he thought maddie just meant oh it's some kind of fight with my stepdad or whatever you know he didn't realize i'm sure so many people did not realize maddie was dealing with something so heavy and demonic and just to be such a little girl dealing with that and likely on her own because her cries for help either people didn't quite understand them or she didn't you know speak out and it's through no fault of her own because she was so oppressed and she probably just rattled it back and forth in her mind so long this happening to her starting as a very very young girl growing up and maybe just in recent years realizing wait a minute this isn't right what's happening and maybe even asking herself why is my mom allowing him to take me up you know and us to go sleep in the bed together the guest bedroom or why is my mom even allowing him to come back into this home i'm not saying jennifer knew and it's getting confused because the way it's being reported you know like people magazine they reported yesterday i mean it could be true but they're saying oh jennifer realized oh he's been grooming my daughter and he's been abusing my daughter. But Jennifer said that in the interview. That's why I like to see the actual evidence. Jennifer was saying that, not that I'm defending her or anything. I'm just trying to get to the truth. Jennifer was saying that at some point as the interviews went on, as she was exposed to more of their evidence, then she said, oh, I realize he's been grooming and abusing my daughter. So just always Google stuff. Even people are still wondering, where did Jennifer say the sex stuff was not evil? I mean, that is a literal quote we have in a PDF. They haven't given us that video or audio yet as of this filming. Maybe they'll give it to us soon, but I can link to the actual PDF below. People are still trying to say, where did Jennifer say that? I haven't seen her say that. Well, that's what the police are saying. She said, quote, the sex stuff, quote, was not evil, quote. That's what they're saying. Hopefully any day now, I'm praying we'll get her actual audio and her actual video. So maybe we can see that portion of her saying that to police herself. I don't know. But I wanted to just give you that update. That's what's going on with the evidence. We're waiting on the photos. The photos might still take a while. It could even go into October. And I'm just being patient. It's like we did the best we could. We paid their invoices they gave us. We just have to wait, pray. We're at their mercy. Pray the mercy of God and Jesus infuses in them to just give us stuff. That they release the right stuff. Whatever is meant to be released under law that won't hurt the case. It's always an excuse to me, people saying, oh, we can't see all this evidence before, you know, he goes to court because that'll hurt the case. It won't because you can always find many jurors who have never, ever heard the name Stefan Stearns. Believe me, just because we're so into true crime doesn't mean other people are. If you talk to an average Joe out there, someone, your neighbor, and you ask them, who is Stefan Stearns? Chances are about 70% of those people or more, especially if you're not in the Kissimmee area would say I don't know and even people in Kissimmee and Orlando might say I don't know who are you talking about so I don't buy the notion that too much publicity can harm the trial of course in a case like Scott Peterson they moved it over a county or whatever I understand that I agree with that but it doesn't mean we should never see any evidence so that's where we are today. We'll see where the evidence goes, what'll be released. I want to close with Acts 4, 11 through 12. This Jesus is the stone which was despised and rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given 
among people by which we must be saved, for God has provided the world no alternative for salvation. That's a good one. I feel like I just read that scripture in a recent video, but it's always worth it. And it makes me think about rejection. It makes me think about how Hidden Crew Tribe talked about Maddie being unseen. As I was falling asleep listening to that video, I thought, it's almost like, don't worry, baby girl, we all see you now. Unfortunately, Maddie had to live this life of sadness and, you know, just not being protected, experiencing things she shouldn't have experienced, maybe trying to make outcries or even giving hints, even if the hints were just in her behavior or her body language or the stuff she scribbled in her journals and people may not have picked up on it may not have noticed and I'm not blaming those folks around her like counselors or friends they may have had no idea even though all that pain went unseen her case now is very seen and I pray it not only helps Maddie get her justice in Jesus but also all the other especially children I just have a heart for children suffering I'm like if I had a superpower I wish I could prevent crime from happening, especially to children. So all the other children, the people may be experiencing a similar thing that Maddie's experiencing. I hope it helps their cases stop. I hope it somehow exposes their perpetrators or even the people covering for their perpetrators. Or I hope this cautionary tale really helps someone stop suffering and for Maddie's case to truly be seen even though she was unseen on earth she's truly seen now so thank you all so much for watching all of this again and I'll just keep digging of course into this and other cases I'm really invested in this one I'm really following other cases I do have to choose what to spend my time on since I do spend time filming and then editing editing <laughs> uploading rendering my husband teases me what are you rendering uploading editing where in the process are you processing doing all the things to get this up on youtube we will see more evidence might be here any day now and then we'll just move forward with that but thank you so much for your kind comments for watching for all your support take care uh, tuesday february 27 13 11 hours detective hunt for ocso case 24-0 one one three one three. Uh, can you say your full name? No, What's your relationship? Um, and so, do you recall the last time you spoke? That was Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. I celebrated. Her. Yes. Um, and is that the last time you saw her That's too? The last time I saw her. Got it. And so, I won't keep you too long, but it's my understanding that it's not uncommon. For from school to here sometimes? She she, uh, she did it late a few times. Okay. Yeah. And is that normally like when she's waiting for her to pick her up or? Uh, yeah. Um, sometimes she to the office and pick her up. Mm -hmm. She walks from school to here. Okay. She did it like uh, maybe, I don't know, five, six times. Okay. Yeah. So just a few times she's done just that. So that's why Jennifer would have come here yesterday to see if she had maybe, yes, maybe, maybe she come here. here yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember what Jennifer told you yesterday? No, she's like, waiting here at school, but she doesn't come out. She's not, I don't, I don't think she's here. Maybe she walked to school, to, to the office. And I was like, okay, I'll wait here. Mm -hmm. It was 4.30, 4.35, 4.40, and she never showed up. Okay. So, and we went together to school, but the office were closed. Mm -hmm. It was only the, like the after program, they were open. Mm -hmm. So we went to a verify to the school mm -hmm. and the program, she didn't. Yeah. Um, while we went to the uh, school, um, Jennifer called two friends that she has mm -hmm. and they told that she never made it to school. Got it. That's when we find out everything. Okay. She wasn't in school. Did she tell you who took her to school yesterday? I know it Stephen, yes. Okay. came here to, I don't even know, I guess for Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does he live there with them still or? No. 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 Gotcha. He just came. Does he? I guess he just came to visit. Got it. Yeah. When did? I'm not sure, but I know he moved back in December to Punta Gorda. Mm -hmm. He moved out, out of the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it, as far as you know, it's because they. As far as I know, I don't know. 
Okay, well, I guess that makes sense. Um, but he came back this weekend, maybe for back, her. Just, for I It, uh, I guess, is it common of Stefan? I guess sometimes he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. Um, and did he say where he dropped her off at at all? He said he dropped her off in the corner of Urbana. There is a building there. It's called Urbana. 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 It's okay. towns, town loop, and I don't even know the name of the street. Okay. By Urbana. I was right in the corner. Got it. So he dropped her off there, and then did he say what happened after? He said that he just walked, like going to school, mm-hmm. and then she stopped for a few seconds. I guess she was looking for her phone. Yeah. And then he just kept going. Okay. Um, run away before, or ever wanted to go somewhere else, or hang out with her friends without permission no. or anything? No, not that I know. Okay. Um, is there anywhere you know of that she likes to? hang out or, or go to to clear her head if she's ever upset or a place that she likes to go? One day she was upset. I guess she had a fight. And she called me crying. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm walking around the neighborhood. I was like, why are you doing that? She's like, I don't want to be in my house right now because I am mad. I'm like, you know what? Go back to you, to the house. Don't walk alone in the street. And she said, okay. So she went back. That's the only thing I knew it happens. That was, I think, like a year ago. That happened like a year ago. Okay. And then after that, I don't know. Got it. Okay. Um, do you have any concerns with... I, I just ask this because I have to. Do you mm-hmm. have any concerns about either Jennifer or Stefan with... ever raised alarm with you that you can remember? I never liked him. Don't ask me why, because I don't even know myself. It's because I guess he doesn't work, he doesn't do anything. I mean, he's just there because he suffers from a lot of things. Okay. And I, I mean, he doesn't do anything, he doesn't work, he doesn't help you. Something that, you know, it's not my life, but I just ask her, you know. Okay. Got it. Um, so typically, does you or anything from the phone? No, no. Not much? Not much. Do you remember the last time you spoke with her before Sunday? Well, I spoke to her uh, Friday, Friday, because mm-hmm. she slept over my house. Okay. Uh huh. And then Saturday, uh, I came here to work. And after here, I was going to the body. Gotcha. And I told my husband to mm-hmm. was going to take her. And she started crying. She said, no, she doesn't want to go. So um, she didn't go at all. Uh, so my ex-husband mm-hmm. went to pick her up. Okay. And you know, they spent the day together. Do you, ever, do you ever pick her up from school? Or does your ex-husband ever pick her up from school? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know about my husband, but uh, when I have to, I'll go and pick her up. If not, uh, Leticia. And when you pick her up, where does uh, typically where do you pick her up Just from? From the school. From the school. Yeah, from have you ever picked her up from like anywhere else, far church. from the school? Church. Like church. Because, yeah, like from the church. Is that somewhere that she hangs out, or other kids no, hang out, or? No. There's a lot of kids there at that time. Oh, they kind of go there. Yeah, a lot of kids go there. The parents will pick them up from the church. Got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Um, okay, what's a good phone number for you? Have your ID so I can get your name yeah, down. Yeah, I have it in my. Oh, that's fine. How do you spell your name? Y O L. Uh huh. A N D A. And your last name? Zambrano. Z is in zebra. A M B R A N O. And what's your birthday? Nine twenty nine sixty seven. I can, and you do have a Florida ID. I can yes. look up with that. Okay, cool. Um, gotcha. Okay. Um, well, is there anything else important that you think I should know? Yeah. My brother-in-law, he went, he woke up this morning. Mm-hmm. He went to look at 
trail mm -hmm. and he was walking and and he passed by 417 under mm -hmm. and she he found the wallet i have it when here. you say the trail what trail it's like in, in the back of the school there is a trail oh there's a trail behind yes, the school behind the school yeah. okay and he found a wallet yeah i'll take a look at it and if you want to come in and, and yeah. take a look what he found and uh -huh. he just gave it to me and 13, i found 20.